So I'm not really thrilled to be shooting this video. Um, I put personalized plates on my Lotus Esprit and uh, they, they read dodgy, which I thought was kind of a funny joke. Uh, however, my car took it quite seriously and developed a misfire just two days later. So I've had the car for seven months. This is the first major issue I've had with it. Everything else has just been kind of fixing what was needed to be done that somebody else had lived with for a while. So initially, uh, it was intermittent, and then it became a dead miss. So I'm going to go through the process. I'm going to tell you everything that I've done up till now and bring you up to speed of where we're at at this point. So the first peculiar thing I noticed is that while it had a dead miss, it did not have a check engine light. So I scanned it, and it had no codes. And in my experience, when a, an OBD2 car doesn't have codes, it's kind of a clue to something else is wrong. However, uh, I decided to pull the plug wires out and check the plugs, check everything, because I had never been into this part of the car. And I found signs of uh, moisture, some rust in the spark plug wells. Uh, so I ended up ordering a complete ignition system. Uh, I did coils, plug wires, and plugs, and I also upgraded the injectors at the same time. Um, it's a it's a plenum off deal. I don't know if there's any other videos on that. I'm not going to show you how he did that because I'm not taking the car back apart right now. Um, but basically, you got to pull this off, and uh, it's really not that hard. There's a learning curve to it. I'm used to working on German and Japanese cars, so this is kind of different. But uh, I got it all back together. I took my time. It took a lot of time, actually. Most of the time, I fly through stuff, and uh, it still had a miss. So. I was pretty upset. So as you can hear, it doesn't sound great. Uh, in fact, uh, by checking uh, which cylinders were dead, I discovered that there were two dead, which was interesting to me. Each coil pack, which they're in the valley, each coil pack feeds each bank, but the, they're opposing. So the coil pack on the right bank feeds the left cylinders, and the opposite is true as well. So there's only three wires that lead from the ECM to the uh, coil pack, and which means that two coils are firing simultaneously, which means that I had two dead cylinders. So I thought, well, that's peculiar. Um, you know, if, if it was just one cylinder, I'd think it was either a spark plug wire or spark plugs. You know, they can be bad and out of the box. Um, so can coils, for that matter. However, I, I find it hard to believe that the original coils had a problem and then the coils I installed had a, the very same problem. I mean, that's a pretty low likelihood. So I started digging a little bit deeper and uh, I did continuity tests between the coils and the engine control module and it has continuity, so we're good there. So I re did some reading, looked online, and uh, other people had problems with the actual computer itself. And uh, through work, I'm pretty used to working on electronics, replacing capacitors, resistors, some SMT stuff. So I figured I'd get it out and crack it open to see if there's any visual signs of damage. And there wasn't. So I have to actually diagnose it now to figure out which cylinders were misfiring. Instead of pulling plug wires while it's running, which that can overheat a coil, I decided to use an inductive timing light. And this is really simple. You just clamp around the spark plug wire. And if you have spark, this will flash. And if you don't, this won't. So I'm going to start it up on one of the cylinders instead and show you that it doesn't flash. So I don't know if you can see that, but this cylinder has fired. This is cylinder number four. So then we're going to go clamp it on cylinder two, which I know is dead. And it doesn't do anything. That is a doornail. So the computer on these cars is located back behind this cover. It's not the easiest thing to get to. You pretty much have to be in the engine bay to take it out. Uh, there's some Phillips screws. Then that panel comes out. And then there's uh, four 8mm bolts that you have to be very careful not to drop because you'll probably never get them again. And uh, I pulled the computer out, opened it. Like I said, I inspected it. On some of the older Ford stuff and GM stuff, you can see where the capacitors have leaked and caused trace damage or there's a leg broken off of something. Well, this has no signs of that. So there's no signs of corrosion. That's good. However, that means that the problem is harder to find. But we're going to go and verify what... I'm going to show you how I verified 
uh, that there is an actual problem with the ECM itself. So we are key on currently and uh, if I understand the wiring schematic correctly I should have 12 volts passing through the coils on four different leads. Basically I explained there's three wires per coil and 12 volts should pass through four of the six wires that go to the coils and I'm going to test that at the actual computer. Uh, those are pins 29, 32, and 49 and 52 I believe. I believe that's right. I'm pretty sure that's right. So I already know which ones are which so we're gonna go to you can tell they're a little thicker gauge. And I'm not grounded. Nope. You have to have your meter grounded if you want to play this game. So now what we're going to do is we are going to start the engine and I'm going to check the output which feeds the coil from the ECM and I should get operating voltage 12.7, 12.8 voltage to the coil. Anything that's more than half a volt off, they should all be pretty similar, uh, leads to a problem. So we're going to fire it up and we're going to see what the output is. Alright, so that one's 12.5. That one's only 10 volts. That's 12.8. 12.8. So this terminal here is a problem. It's only 10.5 right now. So this pretty much rules out the wiring and the, it doesn't mean that the coils are good, but this definitely means that the output to the coils is wrong on that terminal. So basically, by doing that, I've proven that there is an incorrect output from the ECM to the coils. Uh, again, those terminals that you need to know are 29 and 32, 49 and 52. 29 and I think there's like a match pair, like two of them go to one coil, two of them go to the other. But in this situation, uh, three of them were putting out 12.8 operating voltage, 12.8 volts uh, while the engine's running. And one of them was putting out, starting at nine and a half, and it worked its way up till 10. So that we know is a problem so at this point I'm gonna show you the inside of the computer point to which drivers go to which terminals and we may switch drivers and see if we can get the opposing cylinders to fire so now I've got the ECM on the bench uh, these are really a strange size I think they're like two and a half millimeter or three thirty seconds uh, there's an Allen so I just have them kind of loosely in there as the point at this point so we're going to pull this cover off and I'll show you what the inside looks like. So here's what the inside looks like. And all of these are drivers. So these transistors all drive a different function, whether it be coils or injectors or some other solenoid somewhere on the car. So for me to figure out which went, which uh, driver were the affected drivers, I went to those terminals I listed before and I did a continuity test on the output leg of the transistor which is typically the center and I determined which ones which transistors were the drivers for the ignition circuit so I've taken I've taken both of the little clamps off of the two that are the coil driving transistors and this one is the one that uh, I suspect is bad and this is the one that I suspect is good. And I've done this by doing continuity test. So I am going to desolder this one and this one and swap them. And by doing so, if my theory is correct, I should now have no fire on cylinders one and four. And I should have fire now on cylinders two and three, which we can verify using the timing light. So with some careful work, I was able to get the transistor out which I assume is the bad coil driver and there are no signs of damage so now we're gonna get the good one out what I assume to be a good one and put it in that spot and put this one into that spot and we're gonna see if we swap coils that fire so now that I've got the good one out and the bad one out we're gonna swap their positions and plug the ECU back in the car and see what happens So now we're gonna start it now that everything's plugged back in and we're gonna see if it runs on six cylinders like it did before Okay now. Oh. 
I can hear it. You can hear it missing. a cylinder that had no spark before. So that did not go as planned at all. Uh, I swapped the drivers and the same exact problem persisted. So I ended up fixing it a different way. I'm going to show you what I did, but now it runs great. If you've never soldered before or worked on the inside of an electronic component like a computer or something along those lines, this is not the time to learn. Do not learn how to solder or work on these type of things on this computer. It's a very easy one to screw up and it's very difficult to find. So what ultimately fixed this, um, it's kind of hard to believe, but um, what I ended up doing is I pulled every single one of these clamps off and I cleaned everything with some rubbing alcohol. Cleaned all of the, this is called conformal coating. This is this gel coating that's all on top of the board. Cleaned all of that off to where it was just bare circuit board. And then I reflowed the solder joint on every single one of these drivers. I used some flux as well, but I, I went through every single one and reflow the solder joint. Not only did I reflow those, but I reflowed these up here, which some of these go to capacitors, and some of these go to what is considered surface mount resistors that are on this side. By doing that and cleaning it and, and basically new solder, apparently that fixed it. I really don't like the way that that ended up. Um, this is kind of a move of desperation. These are pretty much impossible to find. So I didn't want to take the chance at screwing it up, uh, so I took my time. I've got about two and a half, three hours in this now. Um, and of course, I did swap drivers from one side to the other, but something got me thinking. And I sell at work a lot of different computers. Some of the worst problems with them are blown injector or, co or coil drivers. In my experience, coil drivers and injector drivers and these other transistors that are used as, as drivers, when there's a failure, you can usually see it. You can't always see it, but you can usually see it in like Ford Escapes. It's a very common problem. They have a coil driver fail and they're usually blown apart on the inside. The same thing is on some of the BMW stuff. I've seen the drivers explode, especially on N54 cars. So the, the fact that I couldn't visually see a problem was kind of a problem in itself. The second thing is that I know that on certain circuit boards I have seen, obviously when these things are assembled they use the most minimal amount of solder possible. So I have seen there are lots of repairs that we do at work 
that are literally just reflowing solder or removing old solder which may have had some sort of corrosion or something bad in it and using new solder. I, I really wish that this was a much more, okay, there I saw it, it's blown up and I replaced this component and now it works. Unfortunately, that's not what happened, but the end result is the same. The car runs great. Uh, it's, it does have a check engine light on, but that's from when it didn't run great. I need to clear the codes. But if you are handy with a soldering iron, and please do not learn on this. This is not something to, to play around with. But if you have a good, you have to have a regulated soldering iron. Do not use like a Harbor Freight soldering iron. Use something that you can set the temperature on and make sure you have flux, make sure you have good solder. Uh, all, all of this stuff matters. I mean, we're not soldering two wires together on your trailer. This is a several thousand dollar computer, so this is nothing to play with or learn on. But if you reflow these solder joints and clean everything as well as you can, I think you could possibly fix it if you have the same symptoms. It is worth a shot. Um, you know, if you're looking at replacing one of these anyway, it's still, you know, it, 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 you're, you're not really doing any harm. Just please don't get in here if you've never soldered before. I cannot stress that enough. And one last thing uh, before I button this back together. Whenever you, you remove that conformal coating, you can use alcohol, uh, you can use like brake clean works. Uh, whenever you do that, you need to replace it. The, the reason they put this conformal coating on is because it, it wicks moisture, it pushes, it keeps dirt and debris out of the circuitry, which can conduct electricity. I've seen several components from other vehicles that have no conformal coating and the dirt causes the problem. I, it's hard to believe, but that's really what happens. So you can buy this stuff, uh, this is what we use, and it is just spray on, it's like paint essentially, but you have to replace it, otherwise you are opening the door to a whole new set of problems. Not that you drive these cars in, in inclement weather or in dusty situations, it's just not worth saving 20 bucks to have to go through here and clean something again. This car really put me through the ringer this weekend. I, uh, I lost some sleep over this and not having my car for what was one of the nicer weekends really kind of put a damper on things, but it's fixed now. Whether it stays fixed, well, time will tell that, but now it is fixed. Hopefully other Esprit owners can learn something from this video. Um, if you have never soldered before, if you've never worked on electri electrical components, if you do not have a temperature regulated soldering iron, do not attempt this repair. I cannot stress that enough. I'm not going to be held responsible if you burn up your computer. Just, if you don't know what you're doing, take it to somebody who does. Don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully, the rest of the videos on this car will be me driving it and not fixing it.